prophets centuries old. The birth of Messiah has been long foretold that unto you Down on this 
Merry Christmas. Welcome in the God's house. We celebrate on this Christmas Eve. We are blessed with uh, the service here that the kids, we have a gift for the kids during the children's service and the sermon time that they will help with the message. And then uh, we have, uh, after that, we have our uh, service here. Then we have our six o'clock with the uh, choir. We have our eight o'clock with the bells. And then we do have a 10 p.m. service, that's communion tonight, that will be with the strings, with violins and guitars, and so uh, festive times, a fest celebration, and then Christmas Day at 10 as well. We're going to celebrate by standing and following the cross, you know, from the back of the church to the lighting of the Christ candle, and celebrate this day. We turn to page two in our service folder. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger.
then we have the placement of the baby Jesus in the manger as we celebrate this day. Continue as the anthem praise group sings, Adore Him.
As we come together in the house of God this day, we come together celebrating this day and celebrating Christmas Eve and the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we do so, we come together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God himself is present. God is with us. Let us confess God's righteous judgment of our, of our sins and beg for forgiveness. O oh God, on this holy night, we gather to celebrate the gift of your answer to our sin and need. Even before we ask it, you have provided for us what we need the most. Grant us the gift of your forgiveness as we confess all our sin with which we have offended you and brought suffering and death upon ourselves. May the love you have for the whole world be upon us. May your Son be born in us this day. May your forgiveness cleanse us and give us life for the sake of his name. Amen. From Matthew 1, 21. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now upon this your confession. I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you in the stead. And by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you see it at this time, I invite the children to come forward and spend some time with me. I need you guys to scoop back and sit up at the top. So can you guys scoop back, make room for everybody? Come on and have some, have a seat up there. Scoot a little bit back. Make some room. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry. Oh, let's try that one more time. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right. What a day it is to be able to be on Christmas. Yeah. In God's house to celebrate. And today, on this Christmas Eve, we're going to take a look at God's word. And what God's word has to reveal to us about this Jesus, whose birth we celebrate. You'll hear the word reveal, but what does that word reveal mean? Hmm. How many of you are going to get a Christmas gift? I'm glad you guys are. See, they're, they're not raising their hands. So you guys are getting all the Christmas presents, apparently. And so I know when I was your age, one of my favorite things to do when we opened up our presents that were there on Christmas morning is I loved it when we went to our, our cousin's house, our uncle's house, and we took one of our favorite presents to be able to show. Any of you like to show people your favorite present? Any of you? Do you, do you show your people for your favorite present? I think you will. I do. In fact, I want to reveal and show you. That's what reveal is, to show you with joy one of the presents I got like 13 years ago. This was a present that I got 13 years ago for Christmas from my dad and my mom. And so I reveal it, I show it to you. And I show it to you because every time I wear this, I remember the gift that was given to me by my mom and my dad at Christmas time. And it makes me excited and I'm glad to see it. Now, most of them think I don't pay attention. It's a watch, but yet it's something I look at and it reminds me. When we're in God's house, it's reminding us of not the Christmas gifts you're gonna open up maybe tonight or tomorrow, but what is, when you come into God's house, what gift are we remembering? 
today. Yeah, the gift of Jesus. And this service is to kind of show you what some of those gifts are, it, to remind you what it means to have that gift of Jesus for you today and for you tomorrow. Now, some of the gifts that you guys get tomorrow probably won't fit your parents, so they probably won't play with it, right? Well, some of the dads will play with your gifts. But anyways, but here tonight, what we're showing you is a gift that means as much for you as it does for your parents and your parents to you. And so one of the things I want to, I'm going to be giving to you guys is one of these. And it has a little thing on the back, and you can do this with your family. You can do this with your parents, and if they want you to do it during the service, that's fine, but you have to make sure you take care of that because in the, at the end of the sermon, I'm going to have you lift it up and show and reveal, reveal, show people what this picture is. Now, you already know probably what's going to be, but yet you don't know exactly. And so we know what Christmas is, but today's God's word that's going to share with us exactly what that means for us. And so let's pray together. Let's do an echo prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for all the gifts that we'll get, but especially thank you for the gift of Jesus, my Lord, my Savior. Gracious Father, as your word reveals, shows us the love that you have for us, lead us to live in that love by showing it in your name to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, as you guys are coming out this time, some of you want to go on that side, some on this side. Mr. Franchuk, you both get the jobs. I, I've revealed the purpose. So why don't you guys come on up and get one of these from each of them. And as they're going back, I want to share these words with you and join with me. Rejoice, I bring good news for all people. Tonight the angels sing on earth. We sing together. Oh, come all ye faithful. And the first set of readers can come up at that time. Our reading says Christmas is revealed now through the Old Testament. Genesis, from 
Genesis 22, verses 18, we are told that through Abraham's offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. Christmas believe Jesus is, is the fulfillment of his promise. From Numbers 24, verses 17, we are told who this Jesus will come from. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not fear. A star, shall, a star will come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Isaiah 11, 1. We know he is from the line of Jesse, the father of King David. There shall come forth a shoot of Jesse, and a branch from his root shall bear fruit. And the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. From Jeremiah 23, verses 5 and 6, we know he is from the line of King David and what Jesus will accomplish. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteousness. Prophecy of Micah 5, verse 2. We know he was born into the tribe of Judah, in the region of Ephrathah, the town of Bethlehem. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, Though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be the ruler of Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. From Isaiah 7, verse 14. We know that Jesus was born, to, born from a virgin, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel. The name Emmanuel means God with us and indicates the divinity of Jesus. Isaiah 7, verse 14. The prophecy reveals how Jesus will be born. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. From Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2 and 57. Jesus is being revealed to the world by these words. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them light, ha light has shined. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And a government shall be upon his shoulder. Name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of the government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of the hosts will do this.
of Christmas revealed through the New Testament. An angel appeared to Mary. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he, and he came to her and said, Greeting, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, and the Son of God and behold, your relative Elizabeth is in old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. And nothing And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. One through seven. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Cornelius was the governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judah, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her first newborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn.
shepherds and angels, Luke 2, verses 8 through 20. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel, I said, the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told. Christ a child is Lord of all. Christ a child was born for you. Let's pray. Grace, Father in heaven, we have this privilege, this honor to come into your house on this glorious day, celebrating the gifts that you have given to us, celebrating chiefly the gift that has come to us through the Christ child who's been born for us. Heavenly Father, bless this time together around your word. And in this celebration, may we go forth with the joy of knowing that Jesus has been born and what that means for us now and for us eternally. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto all of you from God our Father, our living Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Oh, indeed, let us rejoice. Let us be glad in this day that the Lord has made for us and a day that we get to celebrate because of what this day means for us. Dear family believers, faith, family, in Christ Jesus, gender reveals. I was talking with a couple that was expecting a child. I asked them, are you going to be having a baby boy or a baby girl? Do you know yet? And they said, yes, we do know but we are waiting to reveal this to our parents and to our family and friends on a special day. Oh, I remember the great reveal of our children when the three of ours were born. It was the doctor handing them and saying, it's a boy or a girl. But now people have set aside these big events to celebrate to make known the excitement, the anticipation that is yet to come. And so some set aside specific days 
to plan the big events where they will have balloons that pop, things that will break, stuff that will go into the air revealing what the baby's going to be. I remember seeing a video that was taken at a military camp overseas where the husband was there and the wife sent the message that she is going to be having a baby and she sent this ball like a soccer ball that had to be kicked in order to reveal. And the group of the guys that were all there wrapped around this whole setting. The excitement was building until finally he kicked this soccer ball. It broke in the blue powdery substance went in the air the group of military personnel that were there were hooting and hollering and celebrating the dad was jumping up and down I'm going to have a baby the excitement it was the joy that was there building excitement before the big reveal today's service was really designed to help us through excitement through the scriptures to see that the excitement of the big reveal was being made known, was preparing as the Old Testament shared. A message in the Old Testament to build up. A message that really built up from the time of Adam and Eve to a time of sharing in the Old Testament that we see a message. A message that was telling them that there would be this baby who would be the world savior. But you will know that this baby will be much different than any others because this baby will be born from a virgin, as was read. This baby will be much different because this baby Jesus is the savior who will fulfill all those names that were read a few moments ago where this baby Jesus, the Savior, is the wonderful what? Counselor, the mighty, the everlasting, the prince of. These words were all sharing and building the excitement of the reveal of who this Jesus is. Building up the understanding that he is going to be the Emmanuel, which means God with us. The Old Testament with the big reveal. Building the excitement. What happens at times when the excitement gets lost? I remember years ago talking with a couple who shared with me that they were going to be having a baby and they were full of excitement and joy. You could just see them beaming. But then in the midst of the pregnancy... A job was lost, and the stresses of the day of the weeks came upon that couple, suppressing the joy that they were losing sight of. You can look in the Old Testament and realize that some of the followers that were shared about this big reveal of the birth of Jesus to come lost sight. God's chosen ones lost sight of the excitement of the birth. And what happened? David took his eyes off of the excitement. He ran around with Bathsheba. Israelites worshipped a golden image. People of Haggai's time lost sight of rebuilding the temple because they got caught up in their daily tunes. Despite their loss of staying focused, though, God reminded them that he was faithful. And that he was still going to be sending a promised Messiah. So in the Old Testament, we see that God sent prophets to go with the word of God to pull the people back. To remind them of that great reveal yet to come. To share with them his promises through the word. And to point them to the Savior yet to be born. I met with that couple that was expecting their first child and in the stresses of that job loss, lost sight of that excitement. I reminded them of the promises that God made, even beyond what they were dealing with. I shared with them how God, even in the midst of this, was entrusting into their care this little one. 
for them to be this child's father and mother. I shared with them how God would provide for the family. And they began looking again at that birth. And they began celebrating their trust that God would take care of them. Well, that's where our New Testament comes in for us today. The New Testament built up the excitement. Because the New Testament declares for us more than just a gender reveal that Mary gave birth to a baby boy. Because indeed in this New Testament, it revealed that Mary gave birth to the baby boy whose name would be Jesus. And the name Jesus means the one who saves people from their sins. Mary, as that virgin, given that honor to carry the Son of God. And at that delivery, we celebrate the world's Savior has been born, the world's Messiah, the world's Emmanuel, the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We celebrate the great reveal of the Old Testament saying this child is going to be to the New Testament that says this child has been born. The great reveal. The great reveal of the New Testament of Jesus is still what brings excitement to our lives today. We see this. It's the excitement of the birth of our Savior that indeed brings us to what the New Testament indeed has done for us and shares with us of this Messiah, this King, and who he is and what he's done for us. This excitement of this New Testament reveal should build up our excitement more than a group of military personnel wrapped around celebrating with somebody that's going to have a baby because that didn't impact all of them. But yet we come here today impacted with this excitement because it causes us to come together. It causes us as a faith family to come and rejoice, to rejoice like the angels did, to rejoice like the shepherds did. Because this great reveal in the New Testament tells you specifically that your Savior has been born. They look forward to this in the Old Testament and in the New Testament it declares it has happened. What does this mean for you? Well, we know what it means when it comes to our stores around us because tomorrow if you walk into some of the stores, you'll probably start to see the Valentines put up. Mark my word. The celebration of this great reveal of our Savior will be tried to be put back with the Christmas boxes or cheapened with the 75% off to try to get it out of the way. What does it mean for you that this has been revealed to you and that you have the faith to know this? I pray that you take the service folder home with you because I want you now to open up, if you have your service folder, it will be on the, on the screens for you as well, to go through because it's one thing for us to say that a Savior is born, Christ the Lord, the Messiah, the King, the Emmanuel, the God with us, the mighty counselor, the prince of peace, the celebration of what he has done for us and who he is for us, but yet the great reveal is continuing through God's word to reveal to us what this Savior child means for our life. And so read with me Galatians 4.4. 4. But when the set time had come, come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, 
when the time had fully come, at the right time, God allowed this baby Jesus to be born for you. Philippians 2, 6 through 8. Who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. I am certain that any of us who have had children born or any of our parents never gave birth to us with the full understanding and looking forward to the understanding that death was going to take place. But here, God, God knew with his son Jesus Christ at his birth that death would take place. And what does this mean for us? 1 John 4.10 In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. His love. Christmas is about his love. And this is what the word of God is revealing to you. The love that God has given to you with this celebration of the birth of Christ the one who would save man from sin, save you from sin, to be the full payment. And then 1 John 2, 2. He is propitiation for our sins, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Jesus is called the world's Savior. For God so loved the world. That's what this Christmas celebration is about, is celebrating the love that God has for the world and for us. In Galatians 2.10, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The great reveal of this birth of Christ, the great reveal that the Savior has been born, the great reveal is the gift of knowing that we get to live in this great love that God has for us that Christ dwells in us. In Ephesians 1, 7, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. For by grace you have been saved, not of yourself, it is a gift from God. We oftentimes come into the Christmas time the scriptures reveal the birth, the shepherds, the angels. But the scriptures then continue. Continue, as Paul Harvey says, with the page two, the rest of the story. The scriptures continue to reveal to us what this Christ child means and what we mean to the Christ child. As you go this day, I pray that indeed you remember what these kids share with you. Kids, if you've been doing your little thing that was given, lift it up and show it to the people around you. Let's turn it around. So they had to scratch off and it showed the nativity. It showed the birth celebration. And now as the kids have shown you this, I pray that you leave today showing your family what this gift means to you and to your family. Amen. The peace of God that's past your understanding. Keep your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus, both now and forevermore. Amen. Please stand as we continue as the prayers are listed for us. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. Merciful and gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for your great love, that what you had visited us in the person of your Son, Jesus, true God and true man, who is our complete Savior from sin and death, as your church proclaims joy to the world at the coming of the Savior, may every heart be filled with faith, comfort, and joy to receive him, Lord, in your mercy.
Grant your whole church the pure light of your saving word and inspire all who are called to preach and teach your word to do so with joy and complete faithfulness, proclaiming clearly Jesus Christ as the world Savior, Lord, in your mercy. As the world still sits in the darkness of sin and the shadow of death, make the light of Christ to shine brightly in every corner of our homes, our lives, our churches, that many may be drawn to the joy of your salvation and the gift of life. Lord, in your mercy, and visit, heal, and relieve all who are lonely, homebound, hospitalized, or recuperating from illness. Assure them of your gracious presence and grant them the peace the angels proclaim to the shepherds. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, oh, gracious Father in heaven, we do thank you for our military and for all they do and the protection that they give to us. We thank you for our police, our fire, our EMS, our first responders, the doctors and nurses, those who are in the care centers or, or those who work on hospice, all of what they are doing. In the midst of us who get to celebrate and enjoy our families, they, in many areas, are serving to allow us to enjoy the gifts of celebrating you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Christmas prayer. Into your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend all for whom we pray on this Christmas Eve, trusting in your mercy, which comes through the promised gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we join together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. From Matthew 2, 10 to 12. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. We sing, We Three Kings. Seated at this time as our offerings are gathered for the Lord's ministry. As the, uh, the kings responded, as we do know, we respond likewise. Those of you who are assisting with the uh, um, nativity, if you'd gone ahead to the back there with uh, Miss Amanda, that would be greatly appreciated. Again, please, as we gather the offerings, also know that uh, if you uh, have not signed the welcome folder, we ask that all of you do so at this time. Thank you.
wrapped in swaddling clothes beneath the star one gray and holy night. The shepherds heard the angels sing, the wise men wrought an offering. Peace on earth began in Bethlehem. Have we lost the reason that Father, as you have given us everything, you've given us the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the world Savior. These offerings that we give, now we give back to you, asking that you would bless them, and they be blessed for indeed this ministry to continue to proclaim the Christ child, Jesus, as our Savior. In your name we pray. Amen. Go ahead and turn them all off.
and Joseph would celebrate this night of the Savior's birth, we know that the angels and the shepherds indeed were part of that celebration and were indeed there celebrating the wonderful gift of that baby Jesus who is the light of the world. As Jesus is the light of the world, one of the things that we get the opportunity to do is share the uh, passing of the light of the candle. Please note that as you have a person next to you with a lit candle, the lit candle, please hold straight. If you're next to the light your candle, please tip. And then there, that would also allow us not to have the wax uh, being spilt or, or on people or in the church as well. As we have the celebration this day, as you go this day with this beautiful night, celebrate what has been revealed to you about your Lord and your Savior and the faith that you've been given to know this wonderful gift. As we share those words, shine as light that all may see your good works and praise your Father in heaven. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. I invite the ushers to come forward as we begin the lighting of the candles. And once we start passing, then we'll sing the verses that are printed. We'll wait just a moment. As we light from the Christ candle, may we share the joy of the light of Christ with each other. Please stand as we prepare to sing the verses of Away in the Manger in just a moment. As we continue to pass this beautiful light of Christ with each other, may you celebrate that. We sing together. is because of the Savior Jesus Christ who is born King of the Jews who is our Savior from all the Savior that gives us his all that I can share with you this blessing for you today and eternally from Jesus Christ as he blesses you the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We sing still knock, how good knock.
If you seek a special gift, the greatest gift of all, don't look beneath your tree. It was never there at all. The greatest Christmas gift was given to us all, a Christ child in a manger in a lowly cattle stall. And we all say together, Merry Christmas. As you celebrate this Christmas with your family, please blow out your candles and keep them straight so that the wax can dry and then return them back. And please, as you exit, celebrate and rejoice and celebrate this day with each other. God's blessings to you. Go ahead and turn the lights all on.
captives free, tell the broken reeds, hope has been restored. And the one who cries for a wandering child, her tears are not ignored. Father in heaven, you gave us reason to see past the pain of today. We celebrate joy, and the angels sang there was joy. Let the whole world know this joy, our King has finally come. Joy, here is the promised one. Joy, and the angels sang there was joy. Let the whole world know this joy. 